Hello, this is Noreen Crone Findlay from CroneFindlay.com and ToddyTalksCrafts.com. I love making wooden buttons. And so I'm going to show you today how to make handmade, one of a kind, unique buttons from wood. Well, twigs actually, and branches that you find on the ground. Now you don't go breaking branches and twigs off trees. These are totally F-O-G, found on the ground. And these ones I brought home this morning after we walked our dogs. We're very lucky to live uh, in an old neighborhood that's by the riverbank. And so there's huge trees and the, the um, uh, branches break off and I bring them home and play with them. So I'm going to show you a couple of buttons that I've made from other trees that have fallen down. Einstein here is ticking away in the sunshine saying creativity is seeing things in new ways and making wonderfulness with them. You know, the thing about handmade buttons is that when you're making your clothing, whether you're just sewing commercial fabric or you're weaving, knitting or crocheting your own fabric, it makes a world of difference to have unique handmade buttons. So I just want to talk a little bit about the different kinds of buttons here. Now, I love toggle buttons for different, uh, different uh, kinds of uh, garments. Uh, toggle buttons are absolutely fabulous for that, and they're the easiest button to make. Now, uh, the buttons can be left uh, natural, like this one, or you can paint them. And this, these ones are stained. And these ones have, I've drawn on them and have um, used a wood burning tool to burn them. These ones are from Caragana and the green is actually the way the button looks uh, when the, um, when the uh, branches are pruned at, in the springtime. And these ones are from branches that were on the ground for a while. And I did, um, uh, I did varnish them afterwards. Now, you'll notice that some of the buttons, you can see that's really branch shaped. But you're not um, limited to the shape that, you know, by cutting along like toast. You can see how I've gotten an angle on this one and on these two and on this one. By cutting your branch at a slight angle, same thing here, you get uh, an oval uh, segment and that makes uh, just a really neat different kind of button. A note about painted buttons. People, the first thing they ask me is, oh, can you throw those in the washing machine? And I'm just going to turn off the machine, and uh, the machine, duh, turn off the camera and grab uh, a jacket that is actually still wet. I did just throw it in the washing machine and it came out with the buttons just still beautifully in shape. So I'll just go get that and show you. I just pulled this jacket out of the washing machine. It's still wet and the buttons came through just fine. You can see these ones are, are painted and this really, this one uh, in particular does show the how I cut that branch at an angle. If I had cut it straight on the button would have been about this big around but by cutting it at an angle, I got a whole lot more uh, button for my money, and I uh, love that long oval shape. Did the same thing with these ones too. Whereas here, this one is the same branch and uh, cut straight on, basically like a loaf of bread. So, and uh, they're all painted with blue, a gold, and sort of rose colored iridescent acrylic paints and then a coat of Mod Podge on top. 
I'm going to show you the tools next. Not everyone has a bandsaw, a scroll saw, a belt sander, or a drill press. You don't need all those things to make wonderful buttons, but you do need some tools. And these are tools that are going to be really handy for a ton of other things around the house. So you don't have to run out and invest in them all at once, but I'm pretty sure that if you're watching this video, you're already a maker and you probably have quite a few of these. Now, I quite like scroll saws like this, and this little saw, we've had this for, oh, forever, and boy, it's a sweet little saw. Um, this one, I th we bought both of these at Lee Valley, and they, um, Lee Valley are online. This is just the handiest thing. You clamp it to your table, and then you do your sawing in this V here so that you're not um, you're not um, messing up with your table edge. Very handy. Now, you, at certain points when you're going to drill the holes in your buttons, you're going to need a way of holding the buttons still. So, if you don't have a uh, clamp, this is one that my husband bought for me years ago. I don't know where he found it. Some very cool place. Um, vice grips. You need them around the house for a million other things. So vice grips will work instead of a clamp. But if you can get a clamp that, a little clamp like this one that um, does clamp onto your table, then ooh, you're well and away. Um, here's a tiny little handheld drill that I just love. I, I use it for jewelry making. We also have I have my electric drill is charging right now, which is the thing about electric drills is they have to be charged. They're a pain that way. Here's the some sanding blocks and an emery board because you need to do some sanding. And of course, a craft knife is a really uh, essential thing because that will help you get the bark off of the uh, off of the branch. And ruler handy, pencil essential. Paint brushes, very handy if you're going to paint your buttons. Oh, I forgot to go get the uh, wood burning tool, to, but but okay, wood burning tools, great. Um, um, container of Mod Podge for uh, varnishing your button at the end, or you can just use regular ver water based varathane. So um, a hammer just because just because you probably are not going to need it for your buttons, but it, again, it's just one of those really cool tools that you do need. So, so these are the, 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 the tools for making yourself some marvelous buttons. I'm going to go get the drill and uh, get set up for using some of these wonderful found on the ground uh, branches that uh, I... Uh, found this morning when we were walking with our puppies. Hauled them all home and a wonderful rock. There's a rock on the road that was just lovely. I had to bring it home. Okay, I'm going to go set that all up and set up the, ease, the uh, stand for the camera and be right back. I just wanted to mention about uh, toggle buttons that you can use them with a regular buttonhole like this. Um, but what I did to make that more doable is I put spool knitted cord through the holes of the um, of the toggle and then I stitched that through and on the back I stitched it to a regular button just to secure it on uh, this was my mother-in-law's leather coat and then I inherited it when she passed on and so this is a great way of using toggles just to add a fun touch to, to perk up um, a garment that you want to give just a bit more zing to. I also wanted to point out um, the, that there are really good ways of using the lucet cord. Now, a uh, lucet is uh, it's basically a two-prong spool knitter. They're a very ancient tool, and people have used them for thousands of years. Um, when you're using um, really 
any uh, kind of button, especially your handmade ones, but the toggle ones work great with uh, frogs. Now, I did do a video of how to uh, use lucid cords to make frog closures so that you can use your toggle button with a frog. But if you have knitted, woven, or crocheted fabric that's quite loose, like this was woven on a potholder loom, you can actually just push your toggle button through the woven fabric if it's a really loose one. And so the again, the lucid cord goes through the toggle button and works a fair treat. Although it's hard to do when you're just using one hand. And here I've used a lucid cord to make a buttonhole, oh, um, a button loop for another handmade button. Now this one I cut the section of the twig just like I was cutting bread straight down and then so I get a circular button. Used um, a pencil to just sketch and then I burned the pattern with a wood burner and then I've uh, used either, I can't remember if I used Verithane on this one or um, uh, Mod Podge, but anyhow, works great. So now we'll get to work actually making some buttons. Okay, I'm going to, I went and got a bigger saw because the, the smaller one, one of them is really dull. Now, I'm just going to cut the, um, the end see it's quite yucky looking um, or well it's not yucky it's just looking so to speak very natural so it's a little too natural to make buttons with so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to saw the end off I need to tighten up my clamp here on my vise there. Now, I'll just get this sawn off and I'll do that in um, fast forward. So the end of the um, twig is looking good. I checked it to make sure it didn't have uh, splits and checks and things. So now I'm going to just start slicing off as if they were little coins or <laughs> buttons or a little just straight on slices in this direction just this way to make round buttons and so I'll do a couple of those and then we'll move to the angled ones and then I'll just cut a longer one to make a toggle. So you can see here's the angle for the the elongated buttons and hush puppy and here um, the same same uh, twig same branch has given me two different sizes of buttons. Now some of the buttons that I make um, I use quite big piece of uh, branches and um, I like to do things like cut them into squares and triangles and things just to give more shape. Now the next step will be to drill holes, two holes in each, and then I will sand them and uh, if I'm going to paint them, I'll paint them. If I'm going to burn them, I'll burn them. Uh, or if I'm just going to uh, leave them uh, as natural as is, I will just leave them like that. So I will uh, now I'll grab a block of wood and I think because these guys are quite little, I'm going to See if I can do this without clamping it down. I may need to clamp that. No, that's not going to work. I'm going to need to clamp the button down. I'll go get a, a clamp to clamp the button in place because otherwise it's going to be wandering all over the place, which is not good. I'll be right back. 
So I've used a binder clip to clamp the uh, button blank to the um, bench clamp thingy. I got this at a craft store and boy is it ever great. So you can either use a little handheld drill and drill them by hand or let's see sometimes drilling can uh, the cameras in the way here you top camera sometimes the uh, drill can break the button in which case then you just start again so let's hope it's going to be good I think I should lift this up because otherwise you're going to hear a whole lot of drill okay let's see And the second hole, that one was beautiful. No, oh, look, the second one trashed my button. Well, that happens sometimes. So, sometimes you have a fail and you just toss it and start again. Let's try another one and see if this one will work. Okay, so first one looks good. Let's see if the second one's going to go. Fingers crossed. Let's see. Yeah, this one's just fine. Yay, we have a button. Hooray! Now, while I'm using the drill, I've got a smaller twig clamped here. Now, if you don't have a, a vise like this handy dandy wonderful thing, then you're going to need to use um, vise grips or another form of something wonderful to hold on to them and I need to lift the camera again because the drill gets in the way. This time I'm going to drill my holes. This is going to become a toggle button and this time I'm going to drill my holes while I still have the toggle button um, as part of the twig. So let's see if I can swing around here and no I'm going to stop. When I'm making the toggle buttons I like to have the branch or twig clamped securely so that it is held in place solidly so that I can drill the holes before I cut the button from the twig. If you try and uh, well I guess you can clamp the, the button itself afterwards but I just find that cutting the, um, the button off after I've drilled the holes is easier than trying to uh, drill my holes uh, after the button is, is cut from the twig. So it's just a matter of choice. You can experiment and see what you like. And now I want, whoops, sorry for bonking the... Uh, camera there. So now I'm going to just do a little bit of whittling around the ends just to give a bit of a beveled edge. And then carefully not my thumb is well away from my knife because you need to always make sure that you're not in line for slicing yourself. There we go. So, and I might just, there, so that end is looking better. And usually you'll end up with a little nubbins on the end here. So we'll just nip that off. And carefully, carefully, slowly, gently. Don't use a dull knife ever. Dull knives are dangerous. And you just Take a little off the edge there. 
It just makes the toggle button look a whole lot nicer. Then, the last stage is to do some sanding. I'm using a sanding uh, block and very quickly the button gets to be quite acceptable. So there we have it. I'll give it a a oh, little touch of sanding on the around the holes. So there we have it. A couple of fine buttons that started out as twigs that were found on the ground. Oh, and I do need to do just again the same thing, just taking a tiny bevel, just very, very tiny, very gently off to just clean that edge up really gently gently and even though you're working you know fairly slowly by doing it by hand you'll soon have a whole bunch of absolutely wonderful handmade one-of-a-kind buttons that will look wonderful on whatever it is you choose to make so, happy fiber artsing and happy, happy, happy button making. So, next I'll just take a bit of the, what's this, the Mod Podge and give them a little bit of a varnish. And the buttons will be done. Like I said before, when I was showing you the other buttons I have made, you can paint them or stain them any color you want, or you can simply oil them. Don't sew them on until the oil has totally soaked in. But there you have it, a gorgeous button that just is absolutely wonderful, and you made it yourself. Or, well, I made this myself, but you can make them yourself, too. So, happy button making. Talk to you soon. Oh, and um, do go. I've got a ton of other videos about uh, w making the different closures with lucid cords for your wonderful handmade buttons. So, enjoy every moment, and we'll talk to you soon. Go gently. So these are the buttons that I made from two of the twigs that I picked up on the walk. Now you can see that this is the end of the branch, that the, the little twig that I used to make all of these buttons from. So when you cut the buttons straight on, you get little coin size and shape buttons. But when you cut it at an angle, you can make quite big buttons from the same diameter of twig. And I decided I wanted to have one uh, really big toggle for a particular project that's uh, going into a new book. And so that uh, uh, was where the branch started to spread out and become two branches. So that's the one, uh, the one little twig became ten or so buttons. I had four of these little guys uh, burst when I was uh, drilling the, the buttonhole, the, the thread holes into them. Uh, the uh, ovoid ones, uh, for some reason, I guess there's more mass there. They're great. They don't um, break as often. And this toggle came from the slightly smaller branch but um, again, I can cut. I could cut uh, oval shape uh, wafers from that one and get larger buttons. So when you see a twig on the ground, just think, "Ooh, that's not just a twig. 
that is a whole world of wonderful buttons. And of course, now these ones, I did uh, use my wood burning tool to, um, to decorate. And I have uh, varnished all of them. I used, um, uh, this I used Mod Podge on, and this one Mod Podge, and the rest of them I used uh, clear, um, clear Varathane, the um, water-based one. So there you have it. Found on the ground tweaks turned into quite lovely buttons. Happy button making. Cheerio. See you again soon.